Wang Wun, who is being recognized as one of the last artists. Dahil had po tayo, ay pwede maging isang bayan sa ating saling paraan. Beautiful ako sa kung ano ako, oh, sa kung ano yung meron ako. We were able to give about a thousand bicycles to ten cities in Metro Manila. The Iron Lady of Asia. Ganito nakilala si Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago noong nabubuhay pa siya. The winner of Asia's next top model is Maureen! Which is Heroes. This is our podcast that features strong women and engages in conversations to empower you. Join me as we hear from Shiro's from all over the world, share their journey in becoming the women they are today. We hope their stories can help inspire you to find your inner Shiro. This is Pauline Lopez and welcome to Shiro Talk. Nananawaga ng mga mamamahayag na nandito ngayon sa iba pang mga media outlet at grupo. Libreng edukasyon para sa lahat. Yan ang nais ng DepEd. Imbis na bumaba. It's not that easy being a journalist in the Philippines. What more if that journalist covers nightly crimes, high-profile personalities and cases, and numerous stories in the field. And get this, she is also a woman. Our next guest is one of the Philippine broadcast journalism's most prolific, Nina Corpus Rodriguez, who will now take the other seat as an interviewee. Nina Corpus, patrol ng Pilipino. Para sa bandila, Nina Corpus. Maraming salamat, Nina Corpus. Nina Corpus, ABS-CBN News. To tell us more stories from the field of broadcasting and of the two important stories she is now covering in her life, as a mom and as a shiro. Let us welcome Miss Nina Corpus Rodriguez. Hello, Miss Nina. Thank you so much for being here today on Shiro Talk. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, you know, trying to survive this pandemic uh, while raising a family. I have three little kids, so it's quite challenging. But we're okay and uh, we're thankful to be alive. I'm glad to hear that. And now, how does it feel to be the interviewee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, well, at first it really felt weird because that's what I did all my life as a journalist. I would interview people and listen. But over the years, I've gotten used to it, you know. Um, because as a journalist, you don't just ask questions. Um, it's also about telling stories. And, uh, you know, it's like right now, it's like I'm just telling my story and sharing them with you. And with all the roles that I've, um, you know, I've done through the years, like I've grown from being a journalist to a mom to an entrepreneur, I've gotten uh, interviewed about those things apart from me being uh, in the media. So yeah, I, it's still getting a lot. I, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. And it's great sometimes to uh, tell my own stories. Naman. And I can't wait for you to talk about it later on. But now, you, as speaking of you being as a female journalist, you covered numerous um, subjects from crimes to high profile personalities. And it must have been difficult, especially in a country that impressions of women is still ever-changing and growing. So how did you overcome that stigma that women aren't that tough or cutthroat in the profiles that you were covering before? You know, um, I just had to do it. I mean, it's my job. So I just did not listen to what people would say, oh, she's a girl. And I started quite young. I was in my early 20s. So, you know, sometimes back then when you enter a room uh, and you're covering something, it's usually a room that's full of men. And there are only very few of us uh, women. And I was also young. So I would get comments like, can you do it? Uh, you look so innocent. And um, you look harmless. But, you know, I use that to my advantage and I proved them wrong. I still 
asked the tough questions. I still investigated. I still went to where the story was. I went to the crime scene. I went all over the Philippines, you know. Naging crime reporter pa ako. Nag-cover ako sa gabi, as in 12 midnight. Nag-cover ako ng mga, katulad ng mga nangyayari ngayon, no? medyo madugo at nakakatakot. Ganon talaga eh, um, part of the job. At nagawa ko lahat yun. For 15 years, naging field reporter ako. I had to work harder. Um, maybe I had to work harder compared to the guys, maybe because... Uh, all this time, it's there's a constant uh, voice telling you that, you know, you have to prove them wrong. I, I mean, I and it's quite unfair, de ba? Because why do I have to to give in to that pressure? But um, you know, in the long run, it made me tougher. I guess I uh, I just uh, made it. I used it to my advantage to motivate me to become better at, at what I do. Female Broadcast Journalist of the Year for Radio Naman, si Ninia Corpus. Inawara na award for outstanding achievements in broadcast journalism for radio. Ang magandang gabi dok ni na Ninia Corpus at Dr. Uh, Dr. Luisa. I consider it as a double blessing kasi nga there's a baby on the way and then merong mga ganitong award. And so um, I think I did uh, I did pretty okay. It's quite challenging but you know we can do it. And right now you know the good thing is that through the years I started uh, uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> it's 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 been a while. I've been in the industry for that long. And I, I noticed that from having male bosses, later on we had women bosses, women who had the uh, news organization. And that's great. And we saw them lead an organization. And because of that, um, it kind of made other people or the men think of us as, as their equal. Because yeah. their boss is a woman. I mean, which is something that we should have more of. Because uh, women in power uh, like that inspire other women to uh, to be great as well, or or to do the best uh, at what they do, whatever that is. No, thank you for sharing that personal story. I feel like I am learning so much about it because even for me and my sports world, I'm in a male-dominated sport, so. Um, in the sports world, it's expected that men will medal, but through the years, I've learned that women can and will do it. And through your story now, even your story right now is so inspiring. And it's showing us that we don't have to be boxed in. There's not one role for women. We can be strong, powerful, just like yourself. And actually, I wanted to dive into this. Not many people know this, but you actually studied abroad, right? You had um, your Chevening scholarship to study international broadcast journalism in Cardiff University, if I'm correct. Yeah, in, in, in Wales, so, uh, in the UK. So it's yeah. it's a very far place. It's so different from, from where I'm coming from. I mean, I've been to the US, but Wales, I mean, Who's been to Wales, right? So, um, but it was a, a very good school and they have a very good uh, broadcasting program. And I really worked hard for that goal. I had, I knew I had to get a scholarship so that uh, I can go there. And so for a while, I, I, I was doing stories that, you know, uh, would make them notice me. I would write things, I would write stories and essays. And then uh, when I got in, uh, it was like one of the most, uh, you know, one of the happiest moments of my life. I mean, yeah. it was something that I didn't have to burden my parents about it. I mean, yes. I was going to go there for free, you know, and uh, and live by myself. I mean, in your 20s, it's yeah. such an exciting uh, prospect, right? And so, uh, yeah, at first, the office did not allow me to go because I had shows back then mm -hmm. and they needed me. So I had to defer it for a year. And so after a year, you know, I, I knew uh, I had to make sacrifices and um, I had to leave some opportunities to be able to study abroad and have that experience. So, um, so I did. I left a lot of opportunities actually. And up to this day, I don't know, it's Kim Atyan, so always teases me about mm -hmm. it. Na. He always tells me, ah, oh, oh nag aral abroad uh, while you have all these shows, right? Yeah. But um, at that point, I knew that it's what I needed and all these shows are just fleeting. And I knew I had to get that education and experience. And I'm so glad I did because really I would say it's one of the highlights of my life. It's something that I'm so 
proud that I did because I, aside from the intellectual part of it, learning more about uh, broadcasting, it was also about learning, getting to know myself more. Um, I was living alone and I had to budget and I was with all these foreign people. I mean, there were really no... I was the only Filipino uh, in the class and so um, they didn't even know where the Philippines was and all that. Wow. So I had to, you know, stand up and say, I'm from this country and this, and it's a, a beautiful country with beautiful people, you know, and um, I had to uh, stand up for myself, my country, my nationality, not just my gender, everything. So it was tough. I was crying every day <laughs> at first being away from my family and from everything that I knew. But later on, uh, I, re I enjoyed it. I learned about a different culture, different people, because we were a very international class. I had classmates from all over the world, and I had a roommate who was Palestinian, and she would always rant about our classmate who was Israeli. So, you know, it opened my eyes to a lot of uh, things going on in the world, and uh, it made me want to know more and understand people more so it's also about understanding uh, other people other cultures and where they are coming from instead of being too quick to judge yes. so uh, so much learnings from that experience I would recommend anybody in their 20s if they can to you know go abroad live live by themselves and discover themselves and grow grow as a person which it did to me uh, well, I think right now that's I can definitely relate in so many ways. I've been away from my parents since I was 14. You know, oh, wow, here. much younger. <laughs> yeah, and my parents are in the US. And now the advice I always get from older women every time I have a conversation is just you have to truly know who you are as a person before you pursue anything. And um, something that stuck with me now is you're really saying, you would advise this to people who are in their 20s to live alone, learn, learn from those experiences. So my next question is, with everything you know now, what advice would you give that 20-year-old? To a 20-year-old? Um, you know, just do what you want and what you're passionate about. And don't let other people dictate who you are. I mean, I grew up at the time when there was no social media, it wasn't like this when you're pressured to look like something, be like someone, and you tend to compete or compare yourself to what you see on Instagram, for example. Yes. We had um, nothing like that in my 20s. And thank God <laughs> um, we didn't um, because the pressure was probably not like this. I would tell a 20-year-old right now to stop looking at all these social media and comparing yourself to other people or other, you know, women or, you know, whatever. And just pursue your dreams. And um, no matter what they tell you, you just believe in yourself because at the end of the day, it's really just you. I'm sure you know how that feels being a, an award-winning athlete. It's really yourself that you rely on at the end of the day and what you believe in, your values in life. So if you have that those values and that's been instilled in you, no matter what you see on, on social media, for example, will not affect you uh, because it shouldn't. You are so much more than all the things that we see online and you can do so much more so um and also don't it's okay to fail i would say um you know in your 20s you try a lot of things try them all you know if you want i tried scuba diving uh in my 20s i tried uh i went up to a mount climb a mountain whatever and did oh, all wow. that um, i studied abroad um do do all those things and in the process you'll discover more about yourself and later on uh, you know be kind to yourself later on you, you don't have to be at in your 20 dapat ganito na this is how much i should be making yeah. um there's still you know there's still so much to learn and so much to do and learn from your failures and thrive in your failures i think uh that's 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 important yes i mean that, that's a process i'm still going through right now from transitioning and uh, and as you mentioned with the do so much more i actually heard you just added fashion designer to your resume um through your label in a bell i love it could you tell us more about this and what was your inspiration to pursue this well actually um to start with in a bell uh, means 
handwoven in Ilocano. I'm Ilocana and I grew up in Ilocos Norte where, you know, Inabel is everywhere. It's part of our lives. Um, you know, we sleep with it. It's our bed sheet when you eat. It's your, you know, tabletop. Uh, it's on, on the dining area. It's your curtain and all that. And then, you know, and sometimes uh, people think it's badoy eh? um, uh, because uh, you use it for all these things, you know, at home. Then uh, I I realized that, you know, the, it's so beautiful. It's handwoven. I mean, it took months for the weavers to make this beautiful piece of, of fabric. And it should be worn, not just used in your daily, you know, life, but also worn proudly. As, as a Filipino. Gusto natin mabuhay yung yung pansamantalang nawala na interest ng mga tao o, o, sa Inabel. And actually, um, it started with my kids. Um, I just started dressing them up in Inabel and posting them on Facebook because, you know, that's what you do when you're a mom. You, yes. just, you know, enjoy dressing them up like Barbies, di ba? So I would dress them up uh, and people like noticed it and said, oh, that's different. Where can I buy that? Oh, sorry, it's not available in the mall. You know, it's something that I had made, uh, especially for them. It's also because I wanted to love local and, and I want my kids to grow up. I'm not wanting everything they see, for example, online or in the mall that's not that's made abroad. I mean, we don't have, to. I mean, sometimes we still do. Yeah. But I wanted them to be familiar with it. And so now they're so proud to wear hand-woven clothes. Well, I consider Inabel as me time. It has become a great influence on my kids. So Stella and Emily are so familiar now with hand-woven fabrics that they also love sketching now and making designs and showing them to me. And in fact, I made a t-shirt for kids that had kalabaw and tarsier because I wanted to feature our indigenous animals. I mean, animals from the Philippines. Bakit palagi na lang bear or elephant? We don't have that. So I wanted to uh, put a hand-woven image of a kalabaw, di ba? the hardworking kalabaw or the tarsier that's uh, in Bohol. So, and so kids would recognize that. And they would say, oh, I saw that in Bohol or I know they learn, they learn it from yeah. school. And they wear it proudly and it's handwoven. So, you know, it's those those things uh, that, that that as young as they are gets already instilled in them that this is something that we should be proud of. It's our tradition. It's part of our culture. It's our heritage. Tuwang tuwa sila sa design. Tuwang tuwa sila sa craftsmanship. Nakaka-proud. It means that yung gawa ng Pilipino ay world class. And we should continue to uh, be proud of it and, and wear them with, with pride. And it starts when you're very young. Back then, you know, Pauline, it was not a business for me. Yeah. It was just really because I like to dress up my kids and I wanted it to be different. But then later on, the moms and then the grandmas, they would say, oh, gusto ko rin yan. I, I want to wear something like that too. And because of that demand, I started making for the moms like, you know, uso ngayon twilling and all that, diba? So, and then, the moms really loved it. So now I also uh, actually mostly make for ladies now, for women. And I'm, I'm happy to say I, I'm feel, I feel blessed that we're, we've only been doing it for, I think I started in 2017 very slowly. It's really literally slow fashion. But I'm proud of where uh, it went from then to now uh, and how people recognize it now. People know, say, Inabel, mm -hmm. and uh, they're very familiar with it, and they're looking for it. You know, there are people who really look for that particular fabric because uh, they know that uh, this business that, that I do and the people who do it the way I do it know that it's it's done with a purpose. Uh, our, our brand is uh, wants to help communities, so um, that's really what we want to do. And uh, we even uh, say that uh, this, this piece of clothing is not just, you know, uh, from a piece of fabric, but it also comes from the farm. So it's from farm to fabric to fashion, because right now in Ilocos, we're starting to plant cotton. The important thing is to be able to revive the cotton industry you know, so that not only the farmers, but also the weavers will benefit from it. And um, before, uh, it's tobacco that they plant in Ilocos. I'm sure uh, you're familiar with that because th that's what's in demand. But now, people are wearing Inabel 
and there's a demand for cotton. And instead of importing cotton to make into thread, we can now, we're starting to do it. We can now get it from our own farms. So it's really a, uh, a holistic approach talagang from the source to the, you know, to the end product. And, 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 and we want it hopefully to make it bigger so that it not only helps the weavers, but also the farmers and the whole community as well. Ang inabel na ginamit sa fashion show, idinesenyo ni Magdalena Gamayo, na kinilala ng gawad manilikha ng bayan. So, uh, so yeah, uh, that's what I'm passionate about right now. And in fact, I'm wearing one of, of my creations and it's all hand-woven. And it's, as you can see, it's very modern. Uh, it's called the Cantarines uh, or Binandera, we call it in Ilocos, kasi it's characterized by, by lines. So yeah, it, it's something that I want people to to realize that uh, wearing in a bell or, or a handwoven fabric is not badui, diba? It can and it's not just a costume. You don't only wear it for linggo ng wika. Dapat we wear it every day, diba? Like you know, casual out to dinner when you do your errands because the 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 in a bell fabric is is very versatile and it's very matibay as well. Part of what I want to do now, it's like my newfound purpose in life, to be able to help our weavers because it's also my passion. I've been in love with the fabric since I was young. No, I love that. It's something that actually, it's an item that gives back. It's something that teaches us the way you're teaching me right now. And in the same way or form, you're also helping people from the locals from the farmers to the weavers. And well now, aside from being an entrepreneur and a journalist, you're also a wife and a mom of three. Um, yeah. I'm over here wondering with everything that you're doing, how do you still manage time for yourself, for your husband and your kids? And how are you still able to incorporate everything? Oh gosh. Um, you know, when you realize that it can't be perfect, mm -hmm. um, then, then life is easier to handle mm -hmm. because sometimes they always ask me, oh, Nina, can you talk about work-life balance? Mm -hmm. And I say, huh? <laughs> <Di totoo yan." laughs> There's no such thing as work-life balance or work-family balance. There's always a challenges. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it because it's not true. We should work towards getting there. Mm -hmm. But don't be disappointed if, you know, things don't go your way. Yeah. Because as a mom of three, I realized that no matter how much I plan things, and I used to do that, I would say, ito ganito dapat, bukas ganyan. You have to complete everything uh, before the deadline. You know, I have to help them with their homework. Mm -hmm. And then biglang I have an event or I have to host something or be somewhere. And then um, all my plans just, you know, <laughs> disappear. <laughs> and then my daughter tells me, Mom, I did not make the deadline of my homework. <laughs> and then... If you told me that, siguro, when I was a younger mom, maybe with my first daughter, I'd be like, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. But, you know, um, now with three kids, I'm like, that's okay, it happens. I mean, I, I would say then next time, we'll do it earlier. We'll learn from this experience. And it's not the end of the world just because you did not submit it on time. But yeah. next time, of course, do better and try to beat the deadline but it, that's that's just all what i want to say to other moms who are probably pressured mm -hmm. seeing other moms oh but how can they do it all or have it all i want to tell these moms that mm -hmm. no they don't probably have it all they're probably not doing it all um there are some sacrifices that have to be made and decisions tough decisions that have to be made and um, then it's up to you which uh, what what choices you'll make and, and no regrets, Sana, no regrets. And, you know, try to make the most out of, of every situation. Being a mother has changed me completely. I did not realize I was so much stronger than I thought I was. I really believe that all mothers are warriors. Thank you for sharing that. And actually, one of the questions I love to ask my guests, who's probably currently going through it or they're figuring things out, but before, the roles of women was usually to just be the managers of the household, to take a pause from their career or do it later on. But with you, Miss Nina, as I've been reading your stories and also watching the videos, 
you did your career and then you had a family and you're still doing this amazing job you're doing with Annabelle right now. But what advice would you give our, to our listeners, to the young moms or moms who are currently um, also doing stuff on the side with their career? What advice would you give them to overcome all the struggles, to overcome that stigma that other people also tell them you should do this, you should do this, this is how it should, it should be? What advice would you give them? Um, I would say, don't be too hard on yourself. Be kind to yourself. Um, when people say all these things, don't let it affect you. Na dapat sometimes, kasi I don't know if you, I'm sure you noticed it too. That when a woman is on top of her career, so sabihin na ah, because siguro na pabayaan na yung anak. Mm-hmm. Or if somebody naman is uh, really taking care of her kids, ah, she forgot her career. You know, parang there's always something. Isn't that so unfair? Because a woman chooses to be or do something over another. And um, it should be, we we should celebrate both if a woman decides to run the household and, you know, she loves doing that. We should, you know, put her in a pedestal and say, you have the hardest job in the world. I mean, these are what we call the unpaid jobs, but are much, you know, more important because you're you're raising children of the future. You're running a household, and if you can work at the same time, then wow, you're superwoman. Yes. And I guess this is another breed of women who can probably try to do it all. But like I said earlier, there's some sacrifices that have to be made. In my case, I started with my career, and you know, when you're in the industry of uh, reporting, uh, going out every day, covering, and being, you know, ang tao nga sa amin shoot anywhere. Mm-hmm. Pwede kang ipadala kahit saan, kahit anong oras, di ba? Kahit weekend. There was really no time to think of even getting married. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, so I got married late, and so everything was just late after that. So, you know, when you compare me to my peers, their kids are in high school or college. I'm the one who has to deal with a four-year-old and I feel like I'm so old now to be running all over the place, running after a four-year-old. But gosh, you know, I cherish the moments. Um, It's not always, like I said, it's not always perfect. Sometimes you want to scream and shout and say, ah, I'm so tired. Um, well, then then just do. I mean, I guess it's okay to scream and shout and cry yes. your heart out. Especially now during the pandemic when you feel you're alone. And sometimes some of us feel we're alone in the house and the husbands have to work or vice versa. Um, I guess uh, it's okay to, to sometimes feel sad. It's okay to not be okay. Oh. And eventually, right? Uh, Pauline? Um, yes. I don't know, with you, did, did you feel that? that sense of parang feeling alone yes of course i have my moments and i've actually been asked that question <laughs> when is it okay not to be okay and it's actually a tough question to answer mainly because i have to truly find myself know myself some more because i'm still in my 20s still more life experiences that i need to go through coming from the sports world and transition transitioning to something else so talking to women before me, talking to women and sharing their life experiences. I'm learning a lot the same way that we were talking about right now. um, I'm also learning about redefining what it means to be a woman in this generation. There's no specific role. There's no specific timeline we have to follow, but it's just going after what you believe in, going after your dreams and your muse with the values that you uphold. So, um, it's still a process and I've learned through time, especially coming from sports where results matter. Now it's just all about trusting the process and finding yourself. Otherwise, what's all the work, all the work that you're doing will not matter if you don't believe in it. So, exactly, and I can't, I can't imagine, you know, you growing up in that, in the tough, you know, world <laughs> of competing in, in sports. Or it's, it's amazing the life you've led, and and from then, and then and what you're doing now, trans- transitioning into hosting and also, you know, being in front of the camera. It, it's, it's not easy. So I really admire, and you're so young, <laughs> so much, so much ahead of you. So I would tell, talaga, the twenty-year-old said. 
just do it <laughs> have fun with it and, and learn from it of course don't go overboard but yeah. you know these are life experiences that later on will prove to be beneficial and it would you will remember it and say to yourself oh i'm i'm glad i did that i'm i'm glad i tried even if it failed or or i'm glad i won so many different outcomes that that we, we should all just just embrace because i guess it's what life is all about it's really full of challenges and especially so for for women like us we just have to work harder Definitely. and keep keep telling our stories Yes, and I know through this whole interview, you definitely define who you are as a Shiro. But for you, for my last question, Miss Nina, what for you makes a Shiro? Um, well, you know, if you define a hero as somebody who wants to make the world a better place, then we should all be heroes. But a Shiro is more special. For me, it's about women lifting other women it's about making the world a better place but especially so for women and why not i mean um we need it especially now when i'm a mom and i'm raising little girls and i want them to believe that they can be anything they want to be and um, they should not be limited uh, by their gender or whoever they think they are they should Uh, be limitless in their dreams. And it's not to say na dapat you're super successful, di ba? For me, as long as you're somebody who is passionate about what you do, you love what you do, and uh, you have the heart and the desire to make a difference mm. in the lives of others, then then you're a shiro. And Also, I would like to just, I just remember that in college, I had a, my thesis was about women empowerment. Oh. And I paraphrased a, a, a slogan, you know, in the 1800s or something. It's a very old, you know, slogan. Mm -hmm. And I said, women of the world unite. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to lose but your chains. Mm -hmm. So if all of us unite and band together as women, you know, things will be, the world will be a better place. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Ms. Nina, for sharing that. And I'll definitely try to involve that in my thesis since yeah. I'm also still studying in Ateneo. And um, I definitely want my thesis to be about women in psychology. So thank you again for gracing us with your time on Shiro Talk. And I hope to Meet you someday when things are much better. Same person, yeah, and you should meet my kids and inspire them to be Taekwondo black belters. Yes, of course. <laughs> like, I cannot wait to teach them. Follow me in our future episodes and discover our power from within. Our time is now. This is Colleen Lopez, and see you soon on Shiro Talk.